It's Tech Tuesday, recapping a week from the CES pool. It smells like cesspool. I'm Liam Spohr. Number five, Lenovo had a great idea, so they made an idea pad out of it. This little laptop runs full Windows 7 with an Intel dual core, four gigs of RAM, and a solid state hard drive. However, that's not all this bit of tech has to offer. You can pop off the 11.6 inch screen and use it as a standalone tablet for easy web browsing and e-reading. The best part is, this isn't just a tablet that has an attachable keyboard. The tablet runs a separate OS with a Snapdragon chip when detached, then goes back to processing on the dual core when connected back to the base. Even better is that the base can be used as a full PC when connected to an external display, even without the tablet. It's still got some bugs with display and speed on the tablet side, but this thing could easily become a super flexible, yet simple computer for home and school use. But does it run Crisis? Number four. Those Snapdragon chips that are powering the IdeaPad are also making their way to smartphones. The Nexus One already uses a one gigahertz Snapdragon, making it lightning fast, and in the upcoming year, they're only going to get faster. Qualcomm showed off two new chips, a 1.3 gigahertz Snapdragon and a dual-core Scorpion that is rated at 1.5 gigahertz that can run 1080p video. Both of these chips are said to be usable in mobile devices, including phones. That means that in one short year, your iPhone 3GS S squared, Nexus 2, and Droid Terminator 2 will most likely be matching the power of mid-range netbooks. That's not really saying much, but trust me, they will be better than just zippy. Number three, Microsoft unveils a Windows 7 Slate that, not surprisingly, isn't made by Microsoft. It's technically the HP Slate, and it isn't technically called the HP Slate yet, and remains just a Windows 7 Touch device. Oddly enough, the infamous Steve Ballmer is the one who debuted this little touch thingamadoo, not whoever runs HP. There is a painfully small amount of info on it beyond it being netbooky powered and running Windows 7 using the touch optimized layout or something. It seems like it's going to be a cheaper tablet, not like the fabled iSlate, but more of like a $400 range device. More info is going to be announced later, and if this later means that they are letting hype build or more like wait until Apple announces theirs, then match the specs at a lower price is yet to be seen. I'm going with option B. Number two, Pixel QI may sound like a boring, unimportant company, or those people who invented those little stick figure boxes, but in fact, they're the next ones to make a revolution in screen technology. They designed a full color LCD screen that can seamlessly switch to e-ink type screen for reading. Yes, that means that instead of buying a separate Kindle or other e-reader, which after this year's CES, there will be plenty of options, you can switch to a reader screen right on your computer. It may just end the e-reader fad before it starts, since there is no point in buying a Kindle and a netbook when you can easily turn your netbook or any LCD screen device into a Kindle. I see this new tech ending up as a major feature of tablets in a few years as they become more and more popular and the screen technology becomes better and more affordable. So long as this does not delay the iSlate for another two years, I'll be happy. Number one. 3D. This is the second time I'm generalizing a number one story from a specific product to an entire field of stuff. But I have to. CES was basically a 3D-a-thon. In the wake of Avatar and 3D getting better and taking over movies, every major TV company showed off 3D sets that will soon be populating store shelves and home theaters. They are getting slimmer, bigger, better, and more advanced. Vizio had a 480Hz LED 3D LCD, and Samsung was claiming their sets could upconvert 2D content to 3D in real time. They are jamming more junk into smaller spaces since some sets were fully functioning and feature loaded in a one inch wide body. Add in wireless HDMI, which lets you stream full 1080p content right to your TV with no extra receivers, and I think this year will feature some upgrades as people's 720 2D sets get sent to the game room or bedroom and are replaced with 65 inch LED 3D TVs and wireless HDMI. I'm still rocking a 20 inch CRT, so if you want to swap out your old flat screen for a new one, I'll be happy to take it. Then the conversation stopped and I looked down at my feet. That's all for this week. Of course, a ton more happened at CES, but I'm not totally sure more than a few people know what CES is, so I'll stop here. Check out Tech Tuesday on YouTube at youtube.com slash tech Tuesday. See you all next Tuesday. Too many Tuesdays. <laughs>